a warm good morning to one and all once again i welcome you all for this three days online workshop and this is the last day of the three days workshop so in the morning session we are going to look into the multi objective optimization technique gray relational analysis and in the afternoon session we are going to look into the basics of principal component analysis and hands on training so gray relational analysis so here gray is a color gray is a color so this gray relational analysis is formulated based on the gray theory so gray relational analysis is an important part of gray system theory so this gray system theory is originated from by professor julong ding who is a professor at Huazhong University of Science and Technology, Wuhan, China. So normally, we are going to represent colors based on the information available in a data. If a data doesn't have any information at all, then it is represented by the color black. If the data has full of informations from which we can interpret something, then that data is represented as white. So then what is gray? Gray is a combination of both black and white. So it has some partial informations. Depending upon the value of gray, whether it is close to zero or close to one, the amount of information that is available in the data can be interpreted. So a system that has incomplete information is known as gray system. So a system that has zero information or no information is a black system. A system that has full of information is known as white system. But we are having data which has insufficient data information. So that kind of systems are known as gray systems. So in this we have three categories. The first one is the gray number. The, the gray number in the gray system represents the number that are have a partial information the partial information or lower information or they, these two terms are one and the same the so lower informations are partial informations and that numbers are known as gray numbers then we come across the term gray element the element that represents incomplete information the element that comprise the incomplete information is known as gray element then we have the gray relation that is the relation between two parameters or factors so if the relation is represented by means of incomplete informations then it is a gray relation so these three categories gray number gray element on gray relation are a part of the gray system theory so these terms as told the gray number gray element and gray relation are the typical symbols and features of any gray system or gray phenomena so whatever data or whatever experiment we do we have some internal and external disturbances even whenever we are going to work on something 
there may be an internal disturbances it may be from the machines or from the people who is doing that or it may be from the material or it may be from the methods and also external disturbances the environmental effects for example the temperature outside the moisture content outside where we are going to perform the experiments so these are all the external factors so these disturbances both internal and external contains various kinds of noises and uncertainty it produces uncertainty and noises in the obtained data or gathered data so we are going to up, obtain or we are going to gather informations from this uncertainty and noises data collected from the experiment so what is meant by a incomplete information so the incomplete informations or characterized from the uncertainty systems so which is because of the disturbances so the disturbances cause some uncertainty so whenever we are going to perform any experiment we should involve this uncertainties also because that is beyond our control so the incompleteness in information is one of the fundamental characteristics of uncertain systems so there are some four categories the more most common situations that involves this incompleteness in information the first one is the information about system elements which is incomplete the system elements are nothing but the parameters so the incompleteness in information from the system elements then we have the incomplete informations based on the structure of the system based on the structure of the system because of uncertainty there is incomplete informations that also we are going to take care of and third one is the, we are uncertain about the boundaries of the system the boundaries are nothing but their ranges the lower level range and the upper level range so we are very 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 we should be very specific in selecting these boundaries there is a range of experimentation of each and every parameter that we are going to choose so the informations that regards to the boundary of the system is that is incomplete so behavior of the system the incomplete informations regarding the behavior of the system so how a system behaves it depends upon the noise levels that are the uncontrollable factors the environmental factors and all these things so how a system behaves the information regarding this is also incomplete so inaccuracies in data because based on these data only we are going to analyze a process or a system so these data are obtained from a experimentation or from a questionnaires or from a feedback forms or whatever it may be so inaccuracies in data always exist so in gray system theories the meanings of uncertainty and the inaccurate are one and the same the meanings of uncertainty and inaccurate because if a data is going to have some lack of information then the data is a inaccurate data so because of uncertainty only we are going to have this inaccurate data so this uncertain and inaccurate are roughly the same in the case of a gray system theory so here we are going to come across a term error because in experimentation we have some errors so how much the obtained data actually deviates from the original data the experimental data how much it deviates from the actual data or original data for example in measuring a thermal conductivity of a material the actual thermal conductivity may be roughly around 1.2 but 
by measurement i am going to consider it as 1.5 or 0.9 so it is going to deviate by 0.3 so that is the error in the system or measurement so based on this uncertainty the inaccuracies are categorized into three forms or three types the first one is the conceptual type the second one is the level type and the third one is the prediction type inaccuracy so based on this uncertainties only this inaccuracies are categorized based on conceptual type the level type the prediction type the conceptual type is how you are going to consider a comparisons or a expressions so in the conceptual types the inaccuracies originate from by the expressions that we are going to provide for certain events objects or concept or according to our wish so it originates from the expressions for example i am going to have a sample size so based on the sample size i can call it as a large sample a small sample a many a few or high low fat thin good bad young beautiful according to our wish or according to the certain events that is happening or certain objects the objects may be large or small according to the height high low or according to the weight fat thin and something so these terms that we are going to use like large small many fuse are inaccurate a large may be 100 or 200 that i doesn't know a small may be 10 or 20 whether it is 10 or whether it is 20 that i doesn't know so i'm going to call it as a fat man how much fat he is if i'm going to represent him as a thin how much thin he is so good how good a person is or bad how bad a person is i am not going to quantify that thing so these are all inaccurate so where this inaccuracies come because of lack of clear definitions i am not going to define it clearly and because of that only and because of that only these inaccuracies exist and these types are called, called as the conceptual type so in the conceptual type it is very very difficult for us to use exact quantities to express these concepts so as told if i am going to use the word large it may be 200 300 or 400 whenever i am going to use the word small it may be 10 20 or 15 i am not going to represent these things in a exact called quantity but we will categorize will categorize in the word small or large then comes the level type the second category is the level type so how you are going to observe how you are going to observe or record the data reading or the data the that kind of data inaccuracy is changed by the level of perception or research or observation for example i am going to have a i am going to measure the diameter of a shaft the diameter may be represented in meters it may be in centimeters or it may be in millimeters so the level of observation varies whether it is meters millimeters or centimeters so level of observation varies when the level of observation changes from higher level to the lower level the accuracy level increases so the inaccuracy will be eliminated so how you are going to present the data that is very very important so because of this level type the available data or the obtained data may be accurate when seen at the different levels 
इट मे बी माइक्रोस्कोपिक और माइक्रोस्कोपिक और एस ए फोर सो वी हैव टू डिसाइड विच लेवल दट वी हैव गोइंग टू यूज इट इन द एक्सपेरिमेंट so the height of a person can be measured according to the units of centimeters or millimeters but if i am going to the level of 110000 of a micrometer okay 110000 of a micrometer it may be for example if i am going with microns what happens so the more accurate the height of the persons can be mentioned there so the inaccuracy level also exist because of the level type that we are going to use for our studies then comes the third category the prediction and estimation type so we are going to predict something but it may be accurate or it may be inaccurate so exact prediction is not possible at all because why we are going to tell that exact prediction is not possible because it's very very tough to understand the laws of evolution so obviously the prediction tends to be inaccurate in order to estimate a whole system some samples are being taken or collected and then from this only we are going to predict for the whole system in finite element simulation also in order to analyze a whole system only finite elements are being analyzed and we are going to integrate to find out the analysis of the whole system so some samples are collected and that are only analyzed so that i can know the i can predict the behavior of the entire system so this may also produce some inaccuracies in the collected data so since we are going to take only some little amount of samples the statistical data may be inaccurate it may also be accurate in some cases so you have to be very very particular it may also be inaccurate so it is of a fact that whatever method that we are going to apply to predict the system behavior as a whole from the samples collected it is not possible to exactly predict or estimate the whole system so whatever techniques or statistical tools that we are going to use it will not produce as much accurate prediction or behavior of a system so what are the different aspects of a gray system because gray relational analysis is a part of a gray system so we should be knowing that what are the different aspects of a gray system the first one is the gray generation so this is that of processing to supplement information as told previously the black color represents a data with zero information and white represents the data with full of information so this gray generation is aimed at whitening the sequence of numbers by whitening the sequence of numbers the partial information that is available in the data is converted into the data with full information so that we can interpret things from the experimental data then gray modeling so by this gray modeling we are going to model this gray generations by means of gray variation equations and the gray differential equations the purpose is to whiten this model whitening is nothing but getting the most information out of the available data 
so that is called as gray modeling that is carried out by using variable equations and differential equations then comes the gray prediction so by using this gray model you are going to conduct a qualitative prediction the purpose of this is to whiten the data so whatever things that we are going to carry out our ultimate aim is to convert the gray system into white because these gray systems has partial informations so i have to extract the maximum information from the data so i have to make it as a white that is the whitening process or whitening of sequence of numbers so for this only we are going to use this gray generation gray modeling and gray predictions apart from this we have gray decision so a decision that is taken out based on the incomplete information and unclear situation a decision we have to make with the available data so that decision that we are going to make from the incomplete information data as are known as whitening of status so if i'm going to if it is possible to make a decision then it is called as a whitening of status based on that data then comes the gray relational analysis so here we are going to quantify the influence of various factors that we are going to consider and their relations okay so in this gray relational analysis we are going to quantify because how much data or information that the system or a data have that we should quantify that we should quantify so we have to quantify the influence of the selected parameters and also their relations and this is known as whitening of factor relation then we come to the term gray control so how we are system is going to behave and so that we can predict the future behavior so that this prediction values can be fed into the system so that we can control the system so this is like a closed loop system in a open loop system we don't have any feedback so we cannot control the system but in the closed loop system we have a feedback that is fed into the system again and then based on that corrections has to be carried out so that a complete control over the system can be obtained so in order to predict the features behavior of the system or the model we are going to feed the predicted value into the system so that this total system can be controlled so this is a overview of the gray system theory so two important factors that we have are the uncertainty in the systems and the incomplete information that is available in the data so the uncertainty may be because of the system behavior system boundaries system elements the incomplete information because of how you are going to perceive things or perceive the readings so from the incomplete informations we are going to develop a model and that is to be used for prediction and prediction is going to be fed into the system for making some decisions Now, what is the need for this gray relational analysis? For what purpose we are going to use this gray relational analysis? So, this gray relational analysis is specifically useful in determining the ideal conditions. The ideal conditions are optimal conditions of different input factors that we are going to consider in a study or an experimental study, so that the best quality characteristics can be obtained the best quality characteristics are nothing but the outputs 
the quality characteristics of the outputs for example energy consumed surface roughness material removal rate flank wear cutting force likewise whether it may be smaller the best or larger the best that's the next thing but whatever the quality characteristics but we have to obtain the best out of the quality characteristics and for this we have to identify a optimum level setting of input factors and that is carried out by means of this grade relational analysis so one another important need of this grade relational analysis is the performance of a complex process can be evaluated or judged based on the data that has a meager information the meager information is a partial information or a incomplete information the meager is with the lower information the data has a lower information even though it has the lower information we are going to evaluate the performance of a complex process that is we are going to judge or going to make a decision so apart from the optimization techniques this grade relational analysis is specifically important and it is effective in deriving the optimum conditions or the ideal conditions when we are going to consider more than one output quality characteristics in taguchi it is specifically useful for single objective optimization there also we can use multi objective but this grade relational analysis is specifically effective for the multi objective optimization approach here we can have some weightages for example if i am going to consider three output quality characteristics for example material removal rate feed rate and depth of cut the material removal rate is mainly characteristic by the tool performance so if the tool gets weared out the amount of material removed will be lower and also the surface roughness will be higher so i have to give a larger weightage to the tool wear for example 60 percentage or 50 percentage then in assembly the surface finish plays a vital role so the next importance should be given to surface roughness and the final importance should be given to the metal removal rate but if it is a rough operations then metal removal rate material removal rate should be given the most importance so where we are going to apply this technique in this process so that decides how much importance that we have to give to the quality characteristics and based on that the weightages may be arrived so the steps that is to be followed in grade relational analysis the first one is the data pre processing we have to pre process this data then only we can analyze the experimental data then comes the normalizing data we have to normalize for example the surface roughness will be in microns for example 0.03 0.001 0.05 likewise if i am going to consider material removal then it may be 1.8 2.4 3.6 or 1.1 likewise if i am going to consider cutting forces it will be 110 112 114 likewise so the first step in normalizing what we are going to do is we have to convert all these readings in between 0 to 1 we have to convert this in between 0 to 1 so that process is known as normalizing then deviation sequence this deviation sequence is nothing but 
how much our data how much our data deviates how much our data deviates from the ideal condition of white the white is nothing but one so our ultimate aim is full information that we are going to consider as one so how much our data deviates from this ideal value of one so that is known as the deviation sequence then we have to determine the gray relational coefficient then we have to determine the gray relational coefficient based on some mathematical formulas and from that we are going to determine the gray relational gray the gray relational gray may be just to the average of all the gray relational coefficients or we can provide some weightages as told depending upon the importance of quality characteristics we can provide some weightages but the selection of weightage value should be justified so why we have to choose 50 percentage of weightage why we are going to consider 60 percentage of weightage that we have to justify so data pre-processing and normalizing so the purpose of this pre-processing is to quantify this data within a specific index that is in between 0 to 1 so in the pre-processing the raw data as told the values of surface surface may be in 0 0.00 but the values of MRR may be one point something and the values of cutting force may be 112 or something like that. So each and everything we are going to convert into a sequence or indices that is between the range 0 to 1. So that is between 0 to 1. So how much it deviates that we are going to determine for comparison. So as in Taguchi, here also we are going to use two categories for the output quality characteristics. One is higher the better and the other one is this lower the better. The formula for higher the better for normalizing sequence is say Xi of K, Xi asterisk of K is equal to Xi naught that is the individual values minus the minimum value of all the experimental values for example if i'm going to consider a l9 orthogonal array nine experimental trials i might have conducted and i'm going to record the output characteristics for example take flank wear or the tool wear so nine tool wears i might have recorded in the table so out of this nine readings what is the maximum value and what is the minimum value that we have to select and the xi not k is the individual value for example the first trial the first trial value minus the minimum of all the nine values of tool we are divided by maximum value of all the nine values minus minimum of all the nine values so this is for higher the better for lower the better for lower the better we are going to use this formula so maximum of all the nine values minus the individual value that is it may be if i am going to consider the experiment number one the value of the quality characteristics in the particular experiment that is xi not k divided by maximum of all the nine values minus minimum of all the nine values and this is for the smaller better where xi not k is the original sequence value that is the normalized value and the xi asterisk k is the sequence after normalizing so this is the raw data xi not k is the raw data and xi asterisk k is the normalized value the maximum xi not k is the maximum of all the nine numbers and minimum xi not k is the minimum of all the nine numbers then comes the deviation sequence 
how much this normalized data will get deviated from the ideal value of 1. So what we are going to do is 1 minus normalizing value will give the deviation sequence. So it will give the deviation sequence. So these are the formulas that we are going to use. So here we might be using a word that is called as distribution or identification coefficient. Normally this value will range in between 0 to 1 but in most of the cases we will be considering this as 0.5 the middle value of 0 and 1 so we will be considering this. The next step in gray relational analysis is determining the gray relational coefficient so it is used to express the relationship that exists between the ideal and the actual normalized results. The ideal value is 1 and the actual value may be something. It may be 0.8 or 0.2 or 0.4 anything but the ideal value is 1. So between this actual value and the ideal value of 1 what relationship that exists that we are going to express in terms of this gray relational coefficient for which the formula that we are going to use is del mean into epsilon del max divided by del 0 i of k that is individual value plus eta and the del max. In normalization sequence normally we are going to convert the all the values in between 0 to 1. So del max is nothing but 1 our ideal value and del mean is 0 and the value of eta is the distribution factor is 0.5. So del 0 i of k is the individual deviation sequence value. This is the individual deviation sequence value. Then after calculating the gray relational coefficient, we are going with the gray relational gray. So this gray relational gray is the performance measure of all the output quality characteristics. For example, if I am going to consider three outputs flank wear, surface toughness, and the metal remo material removal rate. So for each and every output, I will get a gray relational coefficient. So gray relational coefficient for surface toughness, gray relational coefficient for tool wear, gray relational coefficient for metal material removal rate. But these three things should be combined to form the gray relational gray. Then only we can determine the ideal conditions for all these quality characteristics. That's why we conclude that this is the multi-objective optimization. Because all the quality characteristics is behavior is determined by, by a common index that is the gray relational gray. So it is nothing but the average average of all the gray relational coefficients. It is nothing but the average of all the gray relational coefficients. Here also, depending upon our need, we can provide some weightages also, but we have to justify. So put together, it should be 100. 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Total means 1, that is 100 per day. If I'm going to give it as 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, that will be 1.5. That should be wrong. So whatever weightage that we are going to provide, if I am going to add all the weightages, it should be 1. So here we are going to look some of the examples that relates to this great relational analysis. So here we are going to look into two examples. One is for the generalized great relational analysis. And the another one is for a hybrid technique. Yesterday, someone asked in the chat session, Sir, how to combine Taguchi's with gray relational analysis? So that's become a hybrid approach. So that also we are going to look in this case study example. So the generalized gray relation analysis, we are looking to an example of friction welding process. 
then we are going with their hybrid tauchi gray relational analysis so in the generalized gray relational analysis we are going to consider three parameters at three different levels at three different levels so rotational speed welding speed and axial force in friction steel welding so for this i am going to formulate a l9 orthogonal array so we have to take so for this the experimented design may be anything it may be a full factorial or it may be a partial factorial a fractional factorial it may be trial and error a single factorial experiment taguchi's technique rsm whatever it may be for it for whatever the experiment design it is we can apply this gray relational analysis so i have formulated an l9 orthogonal array for the selected three levels vary through three param three parameters vary through three levels so here we are going to consider two outputs one is tensile strain and the other one is hardness tensile strain and the other one is hardness so the first step is the data pre processing and the normalizing process in gray relational analysis so that is converting all the values in between 0 to 1 in between 0 to 1 so in the normalizing sequence for tensile strength and hardness you can see the minimum value will be 0 and the maximum value will be 1 so in between the other values will be that similarly for hardness so coming on to the output in tensile strength the maximum tensile strength occurs in experimental number 2 281 281 and the lowest is experiment number 8 234 so corresponding look into the normalizing value the maximum 281 corresponds to 1 that is the range and 234 corresponds to 0 the other values lies in between 0 to 1 similarly for hardness the lowest hardness is 104 in experimental number 1 and the maximum is experimental number 9 169 so the minimum 104 is normalized to 0 and 169 is normalized to 1 so this is the normalizing procedure based on the formula then comes the deviation sequence the deviation sequence is nothing but how much it deviates from the ideal value of 1 so it is 1 minus this normalizing value so here in the first category in the normalizing sequence of tensile strength it is 0.723 and hardness is 0 so 1 minus 0.723 it is 277 so it is 277 and 0 there will be 0 in hardness it is 0 so 1 minus 0 it becomes 1 so 1 minus 0 it becomes 1 similarly calculate the deviation sequence for all the nine experiments for all the nine experiments then the next step in the gray relational analysis is to determine the gray relational coefficient for individual quality characteristics that is for tensile strength i have to determine the gray relational coefficient and for hardness i have to determine the gray relational coefficient based on the formulas del min plus eta del max divided by del not i plus del eta del max the del min is equal to 1 and del max is equal to 1 so in the first category the del min is equal to 0 plus eta value is 0.5 into del max is 1 divided by del 0i the del 0i here for tensile strength is 0.277 plus eta value of 0.5 into del max value of 1 this is for first tensile strength for the second tensile strength it is calculated as with the formula 0 plus 
quantity of 1 divided by 0 because in the second experiment the deviation sequence the tensile strength is 0. So 0 plus 0.5 into 1 that gives the value of 1. That gives the value of 1. So similarly for harmonious and for remaining experiments we have to calculate the relational gray. Now coming on to the last column the gray relational gray. Here in this no weightages is given or 50 percentage weightage is given to both the tensile strength and the harmonious. That is 50 strength, 50 percentage. That's why we are going to take the average. So now I am going to add for this experiment the gray relational grade is equal to average of tensile strength and hardness that is 0 0.644 plus 0.333 that is 0 0.977 and divided by 2 we will get 0 0.489 we will get 0 0.489 so determine the gray relational grade for all the nine experiments for all the nine experiments determine the gray relational grade then feed this gray relational grade in the software in the mini tab software because i have to determine the ideal conditions the ideal conditions can be obtained by the main fx plot only so or the next or the other procedure is the other procedure is we have to formulate the response table for each and every parameter and each level of individual parameters for example rotational speed level one i have to take the average of gray relational grade that correspond to the level values for level two the gray relational grade that corresponds to two. similarly formulate the response table and from the response table, draw this main FX plot. From this main FX plot, the highest value will be the optimum condition. In the rotational speed, the speed of 1800 is maximum share. So that will be the optimum condition. In the case of, in the case of welding speed, 30 millimeter per minute, it is the optimum condition. The axial force 8 kilo Newton is the optimum. So here also we have to take the highest value as the ideal conditions. Then we can draw the interaction plots also. We can draw the interaction plots also. So in between rotational speed, the first row and second column we have, so we have to study. In between the rotational speed and welding speed. So first row, second column. We have more or less parallel lines except for speed 1000 except for speed 1000 and welding speed of 3 and 30 that is deviation otherwise we have a more more or less a parallel lines so no that much amount of interaction exists between the rotational speed and the welding speed but in between the rotational speed the first row and third column in between the rotational speed and the axial force, a considerable interaction effect exists because of all for all rotational speeds, there is a non-parallel line representation, which represents that there is a significant interaction between rotational speed and axial force. Then second row, third column, that is second row lost, is the relationship that exists between the welding speed and the axial force. So for all building speeds, a non-parallel lines is developed which shows that there is an interaction effect. So we can also determine the interaction effect. But in all our table, we cannot formulate because in L line, if I am going to consider the interactions, then obviously the error degrees of freedom will be 0 or minus. So in that cases, the on our table will not be formulated. If I'm going to consider the interaction terms in ANOVA, then obviously I have to go with higher order of experiments. Then coming on to the ANOVA table, here 
you can find out the percentage contribution of the welding speed is higher it contributes by 57.98 percentage that is followed by rotational speed of 36.48 percentage but the influence of axial force the influence of axial force is very very low so by this ANOVA we can determine the influence of or contribution of individual parameters that is selected for analysis now we are moving on to the second example where we are going to implement a hybrid optimization approach of Taguchi with the gray relational analysis why we have to go with the hybrid the hybrid by by incorporating a hybrid approach the performance of this analysis can be more improved and a perfect interpretation of data can be obtained <clears throat> so the steps that we are going to follow in Taguchi based gray relational analysis is calculate the individual signal to noise ratio based on the formulas that Taguchi has given the SN ratio formulas for lower the better higher the better or nominal the better but here in these cases we don't have this nominal the better category we want to use but we use only lower and a higher the better concept then data pre-processing on the calculated SN ratio in normal gray relation analysis the normalizing procedure will be that will be carried out on the raw data the normalizing procedure will be carried out in the raw data but in the case of Taguchi based gray relation analysis the normalizing procedure will be performed on the calculated SN ratio that is the calculated SN ratio will be converted in between 0 to 1 then comes the normalizing then deviation sequence then determination of gray relational coefficient then determination of gray relational grade by taking the average or by considering different weightages to them then we have to formulate the response table because from the response table only we can draw the or plot the main effects plot so from the main effects plot only we can identify the ideal of the ideal conditions are the optimum conditions that will improve the performance characteristics whether it may be lower or higher the better then study the interaction plot draw the interaction plot study the interaction effects and formulate ANOVA table from the ANOVA table we can identify which parameter influence is higher and finally whatever experiment that we are going to perform it should be validated without a validation this analysis that we are going to carry out will not be fulfilled so final thing in each and every experiment in optimization is to perform a validation experiment so this is the flow chart drawn to show you the hybrid method the first one is experimental design and execution so whatever uh, orthogonal array or, or uh, signal to noise ratios so whatever orthogonal array full factorial or single factor or trial and error first we are going to calculate the signal to noise ratio for the multiple responses the multiple responses may be tool wear surface roughness metal to motor so that multi-response SN ratio is fed into the gray relational analysis to calculate the gray relational grade that is converting all these three output parameters in their single index in their single index as gray relational grade and that is the single response so from that we are going to determine the optimal 
factor levels. So after determining the optimal factor levels, we are going to run a confirmation experiment and then finally we are going to conclude that. So this is the procedure for Taguchi's gray relational analysis. So the minimum numbers of experiment that we can perform is, so yesterday itself we have seen L stands for the level and P stands for the parameters. So smaller the better, the formula for Taguchi here, in Taguchi gray relational analysis, first we have to calculate the SN ratio. So the formula for smaller the better is minus 10 log 1 by n sigma y a square. Then comes the larger is the better, that is maximization. So SN ratio is equal to this and for nominal the better. Normally we don't go with the nominal the better category here. So, an yeah, example. So, this is a L16 orthogonal array. For three parameters, I have taken four levels. You can see surface speed is 30, 60, 90, 120. So, for each and every parameter, I have considered four level values. So, I have formulated a L16 orthogonal array. So, the output responses. There are three output responses. One is thrust force and the other one is the tar. These two are the cutting forces in drilling operations. In drilling operations, these two are the outputs, that is the cutting forces. And third one is the material removal rate in gram per minute. So next, after determining the output responses, I am going to calculate the signal to noise ratio based on the formulas provided by Dr. Taguchi. So here the thrust force should be smaller the better, torque should be smaller the better, whereas MRR should be higher, whereas MRR should be higher. So smaller the better as well as larger the better. So here you can see in thrust force, the value lies in between minus 32.609 to 50, minus 53.307. So the minimum is minus 53.307 and the maximum is minus 32.607. Similarly, in this also, TOR and MRR. So all these three SN ratios has to be normalized so that it is brought in between the range 0 to 1. So in the normalizing sequence, I am going to convert all the values in between 0 to 1. Then comes the deviation sequence. So 1 minus normalizing sequence, that is 1, 1 minus 0 in the first case. So it becomes 1. Then after determining the deviation sequence, we are going to calculate the gray relational grade, gray relational coefficient as per the formula. So del min plus eta del max divided by del naught i plus eta del max. So based on this formula, I will determine the gray relational coefficient and finally by averaging this, I am going to determine the gray relational gray. I am going to determine the gray relational gray. So how we call it as a hybrid? In normal gray relational gray analysis, the raw data is normalized and subsequent operations is performed. But in the case of Taguchi, hybrid Taguchi gray relational analysis, the raw data is initially converted into the SN ratio based on smaller the better or larger the better concept. And for this SN ratio alone, we are going to carry out the normalizing process and subsequent process. So based on this gray relational grade, we are going to draw the main FX plot based on the formulated response table. So we are going to formulate a response table and then we are going to draw the main effects plot. So the maximum value determines the optimal condition. In the surface speed, the 30 meter per minute is larger. So that is the optimum condition. In the case of feed rate, 0.1 millimeter per revolution is the best. And in the drill bit diameter, 6 millimeter produces higher metal removal rate alongside lowest cutting forces. 
so this is our inferences and the interaction plot we can see since we have considered four level values since we have considered four level values here you can see the non parallel lines are higher that is definitely some amount of interaction exists between surface speed and phase rate in most of the cases there will be parallel but in some cases there is some deviations and also in between feed rate and di drill diameter no interaction exists because it is represented by parallel lines whereas in between surface speed and feed rate and surface feed and drill bit diameter we have some interaction as it is represented by means of the non parallel lines so after formulating the gray relational grade we have drawn the main effects plots, plots based on the response table formulator and we have identified the optimum condition. Then the interaction effects is also studied. And the final thing is to formulate the ANOVA table so that the influence of which parameter is high that we are going to determine. So from this ANOVA, we can determine, we can determine, we can determine that the drill bit diameter is 50. The drill bit diameter is 50. The drill bit diameter is 50.64. The influence of drill bit diameter is 50.64, whereas the influence of feed rate is 44. In the degrees of freedom, totally we have 16 experiments. So the total degrees of freedom is 16 minus 1, which is equal to 15. The surface speed is taken. 4. The surface speed is taken as 4 levels. So 4 minus 1, 3. So 3 plus 3 plus 3, 9. So 15 minus 9, the error will be 6 degrees of freedom. So with this, we come to the end of the presentation on gray relational analysis and Taguchi based gray relational analysis and hybrid optimization procedure. So now I'll take a break for five minutes so that you can chat with me. If you have any doubts, I will clarify you. And exactly at 11.10, I will handle the hands-on training session. Thank you.